My essential passes for Blender to Nuke Compositing are you denoising data. This pass includes albedo, z depth, and normal. The position pass, a cryptomat pass, my preference is the object crypto, but this depends on the project, and the AO slash ambient occlusion pass. I actually don't always use this pass, but still a useful one to have. Although there are lots of other useful passes depending on what you have in your scene, these are the passes I always render, with the exception of AO as my compositing base kit. First in our Blender scene, we need to make sure the render engine is set to cycles. Switch the denoise to optics, albedo and normal. Set your samples for render. Lower samples will render faster, but at a lower quality. Higher samples are slower, but better quality. Now we can use the passes we want to render. The first essential pass is denoising data. I always use this pass when using Blender's denoiser, as it gives you a denoise normal, albedo and z-depth pass which will match your beauty pass noise level. There are times when you might want to use the Z pass rather than the denoise Z depth pass. For example, if you're using your HDRI sky dome or world light as your background, denoise Z depth doesn't render the world light as geometry, and this can mess up the depth pass. If you're not sure which you should use in your scene, I'd recommend rendering with both and see what works best in your comp. Next, we need position and finally cryptomat object. Position stores data of where our rendered pixels sit in 3D space, and Cryptomat creates object IDs that we can key and nuke. There are lots of other passes that have different uses. AO, or ambient occlusion, calculates how exposed each point in a scene is to ambient light, and simulates how light falls on an object, which can be a useful one to have. Lots of the other passes you might need will depend on what's happening in your scene. For example, if you have any geometry emitting a light or glow, then emission is a good pass to have so you can control your light sources, particularly useful in things like day to night globes. Anyway, I could chat all day about other passes, but this tutorial is about the essential passes, or at least the passes I'd recommend for every render. So next you'll need to change your image settings to OpenEXR Multilayer. This is because you need an image format that can store multipass information. Be careful not to click on OpenEXR, as Blender will not render multipass information in this setting. Now render your image or sequence. The last thing you'll need from Blender before moving into comp is your 3D camera. I'd recommend exporting it as an ABC Alembic file. Make sure your camera is selected from your scene collection, name it, then in export settings mark selection only and define how many frames you want to export. I've rendered a single image so I would just set mine to one. First, create a read node. R is the shortcut key, and load your EXR image or sequence. Next, create a shuffle node and select view layer combined. Now we can view our beauty pass. So let's start with a bit of relighting with the normal pass. I have a tutorial linked above and in the description that is dedicated on how to relight with your normal pass in Nuke. So check that out if you want a step-by-step -step guide on this technique. The principle of this effect is the normal pass stores the orientation of surfaces and translates that into an RGB values. We can use a colour matrix controlled by an axis node to change its RGB values. We then isolate the red, green or blue channel and use this as our alpha channel. In conjunction with this, I also use a cryptomat node to isolate the airships from the background. If you export it as a cryptomat pass, all you need is your cryptomat key in Nuke. Use the eyedropper in Picker, Add, and use Control, Shift, and Drag with left mouse button to create a selection box, or Control plus left mouse click on the geometry you want to mask. Create a merge node, plug A into Cryptomat and B into the shuffle. Change the merge operation to mask, then this should isolate everything that's been keyed in the Cryptomat. Now we can drive our color gain or our beauty pass from using the mask input from a color correct or grade node. Experiment with gain and gamma until you find something you like. Next, we will look at how to use our Z-Depth Pass. Once again, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to create the field and atmosphere using this pass, linked above and in the description. The Z-Depth Pass stores the information on how close or far away objects are from the camera. This information is stored as movements values or grayscale. We can use this information to create depth of field and atmosphere slash fog in comp. We can also use the Z-Depth for masking based on this data. It's important to keep your ZD focus towards the bottom of your hierarchy, in other words applied after your other passes. This is the most streamlined way to use it and prevents issues with your other passes not working correctly. Also keep in mind when using the constant node that it will automatically resize to your scene size. Hit S in your node graph to bring up your scene settings and set it to the size of your 3D renders. Mine was rendered at HD 1080 by 1920. Next is using our position and normal pass to relight in Nuke with its 3D controls. 
And yes, once again, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this linked above and in the description. So how this works is the position pass stores the position data of your 3D geometry. When opened in Nuke's 3D viewport, you can see the displayed as a 3D point cloud. You'll also need your normal pass and your camera exported from 3D. Your normal pass holds the surface rotation data, which means you can relight your point cloud with a 3D light and your camera. After picking a light setup you like, shuffle that red as an alpha channel and use this to colour correct or grade your final image with a mask. I usually stick a defocus node on to help smooth out the pixels from the position to points cloud. I will also use a cryptomat again if there's any weird edging. You can also use this pass for adding additional 3D geometry or cards into your scene. I'm not a big user of the ambient inclusion and comp, but I know other compositors who use it so I thought I'd cover it briefly. So we can use it to mask and regrade areas of our scene using the luminance values or inverted luminance values and shuffle this out into the alpha channel. And like we did with the normal and position pass, add a colour correct node or grade and mask this output. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Those are my essential passes that I pretty much always use when I render anything out. I hope it was helpful. You can check out more of my new tutorials here.